Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and I want to wish you all a happy Halloween. I know I'm not really in uh, Halloween garb at the moment, but uh, it's a little bit easier to draw in a t-shirt than it is to draw in a Halloween costume. So uh, maybe next year I'll get some accessories together. But with the whole portfolio thing happening, I did not have the time to get like an outfit together for this video. So Sedona t-shirt it is. So welcome to the first tutorial video for my channel. And I thought since it's Halloween and one of the major things uh, that Halloween is known for is like creepy creatures and ghouls and monsters, I thought I would do a how to draw creatures tutorial. So one of my personal favorite things to do is draw creatures. Like I feel at the heart of it, I'm a creature designer. I love drawing monsters and creatures and uh, mythological beasts. I just love it. And I think it is one of my personal favorite things to draw. I think it's also one of my favorite things to do because there really is no wrong way to draw creatures. There's so many out there and so many that have already been established, along with there's so many ways you can make your own, and there's not really a wrong way to do it. Cute, scary, huge, small, mythical, fanciful, humanoid, monstrous, and grotesque. There's so many options for when you want to create a monster. I personally really like drawing kind of more intense, epic characters, and honestly, I do really like drawing grotesque and creepy monsters. So usually Halloween, I always love drawing like zombie creatures and such. Um, but you know, I, I've also dabbled in like little cute monsters or just different monsters and creatures in general. So the techniques I'm going to be going over today, I think can be applied to any type of monster drawing. It could be anything from big epic creatures to more like small cutesy creatures. I think learning these core techniques and skills can really help any type of creature in monster design. So to kick things off, I think one of the most important steps to take while creating creatures is doing brainstorming and researching. So think about uh, what type of monster do you want to make? Do you want it to be more of an airy, fanciful beast or like a strong, powerful demigod type of creature? This kind of dictates what you will research and what things you'll look up to create your character. So for me now, now that I've drawn a lot of creatures and animals, I kind of produce wow brainstorming creatures. I've practiced a lot of different animal anatomies, so now I can just combine them on the fly and create new creatures. But learning that skill takes a lot of time and energy and research. So in the beginning phases of when you're first starting to learn how to do creature design, this research step is really important. I mean, I even use it now, even though I'm more used to drawing animals and creatures, I still look up different things to make sure I'm drawing it right. So with that disclaimer out of the way, what do I mean when I say brainstorming and research? Well, honestly, almost all creature design is derived from animal anatomy. So you know what, let me pick a mythical beast and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so one of my favorite things to draw is dragons. If it's not obvious yet from the title of my comic being called Jade Dragon, and then 90% of the things I sell as prints at my Comic-Con booth being dragons, then I don't know how else to tell you that I freaking love dragons. So, you know, let's start with the dragon. So here's one I sketched up a little bit while ago. It's a dragon bust. And now you might look at it and be like, okay, well, great, Kaylin, it's a dragon. You know, it's, it's a dragon. It's just a big lizard. And that's the key. That's one thing to keep in mind. If you look at it, how do you think I applied animal anatomy to a dragon? So then it might be hard to see the parts, but let me break down each part that I did. So I gathered together a lot of my favorite reptiles and I was like, I'm gonna combine them all to make a dragon. As you can see, I got some of my favorite reptiles and I got some reference pictures to build this dragon around. So let's go one by one. So first off, I really like how the crocodile teeth are. They're not really within gums, but they're more kind of like on the jawline of a crocodile, if that makes sense. So I basically use that as the teeth for my dragon. So they're not like behind lips or in gums or anything. They're just resting on the outside. And then I also really like how crocodile eyes look. So I took that and made it like my dragon eye. So I also really like how hooded lizards look. I really like this big veil that's on either side of them. So I thought how cool it would be to add some type of frill to my dragon. So I added them kind of like, they look kind of like they could be ears, but it's more just like a decoration of this frill. So the next reptile that's actually native to Arizona is called the horned lizard. And I really like how its cheekbones have horns and it has some horns here on its neck and even the horns on the back of its head. So I took all three of these and applied them in different places. So first I put them here and then I also used the cheek ones and I put them 
kind of on the bottom of the jawline. And then the top of the head, I also put the horns from the top of the head. So I kind of took those horns and applied them to my dragon. So the iguana was like the main base for the anatomy that I really liked. So I used his overall head right here and applied it to kind of the shape of this one with the addition of kind of adding a pointy snout here. So I used this and just kind of modified it a bit. And then I really liked all the skin and folds and all the different shapes that were in his neck along with the spikes and the scales and the bumps. And I applied those here. I applied them here and here and had some more folds along with some of the bumps here. I know this is a huge mess, but you can see I've pulled different parts from different animals all together to create my one beast. So after enough practice and learning animal anatomy, you can start producing this on the fly without having to constantly look up reference pictures. The more you practice, the better you'll get. And it honestly just takes time, diligence, practice, and research. I went to the Phoenix Zoo probably two to three times a month at, at minimum to sketch animals while I was in college since we didn't have an animal sketching course at my college. And I learned so much just sitting there and observing the real life animals and that helped apply those skills to creating creatures. So that type of technique can be applied to any type of creature design. It can help you create your own creatures, or if there's already a type of mythical beast you like, you can look up reference to combine. And you could even take current mythology creatures and kind of put a twist on them and find your own way to make them different. So you know what? I'm gonna show you how you can use these skills to make your own original creatures. So this exercise I'm about to show you is really one of the best ways that I've learned how to get more creative with creature design. It really stretches your artistic muscles and makes you really think and plan what you're gonna do. And I feel I've grown a lot after doing this type of challenge over and over. It, I think it really helps, one, cement in animal anatomy, and two, really helps you learn how to be creative when making creatures. So for this exercise, we're gonna be taking four different real life animals combining them and making a new creature. So you might already have some animals and creatures in mind that might be your favorite, like you might really like a fox or a wolf or a certain type of lizard or a snake, and you already kind of have an idea of what you want to draw. That's totally fine. You can Google your favorite type of animals, get some reference pictures and go from there. But since I've done this a lot, I'm gonna kind of kick it up a notch. Oh man, I found, sound like a chopped host. So since I've done this so many times now, I'm gonna kind of kick it up a notch on my end. I've done this exercise before and I really encourage you to when you start getting a little more comfortable with making creatures. So since I've made a lot of creatures from just combining my favorite animals and such, I'm gonna kind of give myself a little bit more of a challenge. So how I'm challenging myself is I'm getting a random animal generator. So this is completely random. I'll have no way to plan this. It's just gonna produce four random animals. I'm kind of wishing I could do this one because I feel I could do something really cool with these four animals. But, you know, I'm going to do a new one and try it out and see what happens. So after you get a little bit more comfortable with creature design by practicing maybe your favorite animals, I would really suggest trying this out. It really stretches your artistic muscles and uh, pushes you outside your comfort zone. And I think it really helps foster more creativity when creating creatures. And also you can combine as many creatures as you want. You don't have to stick to four. Um, four is a pretty good amount so then you don't have the elements lost because sometimes when you have too many animals you're trying to add too many elements and they just kind of get jumbled together and you can't really distinct like oh yeah these came from these animals so for now i'm sticking with four feel free to try as many as you want okay so let's scroll down and i'm gonna press refresh we're gonna get four completely random animals and i'm gonna put them together and sketch them and make a creature all right ready set go all right i got an eight axe i think that's how you pronounce it a steer a koala and a grizzly bear so what's interesting i have two what you could call bears <laughs> i know the koala is kind of not a bear but i have like two bears and then two hoofed animals it's gonna be interesting um very interesting so what i'm gonna do to start the process i'm gonna do some preliminary sketches and kind of brainstorm a couple different combinations of how to put them together and then from there i'll just pick one and develop it more so uh stick around and let's see what i create in the process
Alright guys, so um, here's four sketches that I came up with. Uh, I wasn't really going for exact animal anatomy with these, I wasn't trying to be precise. I was just trying to think what parts I could put together and kind of like the proportions I wanted. So for me, after doing these studies, I like a couple things out of a few of them, so I think I might combine them to make the final product. So first off, I really like the head that I drew for this one. I like the use of the um, Avex head with the koala nose, along with using both sets of horns. I thought that was um, kind of a cool idea. Along with, I liked the idea of the body proportions having this bigger, top-heavy, broader chest, and then it goes into a smaller rear end. Um, so I think I'll do that. But I really like using the koala hands with the bear arms to make these big two-thumbed arms, and I really like that. And then the anatomy on these back legs I liked a lot more than these back legs. So I think those are the elements I think I'm going to combine. So that has the face of the uh, avex along with the horns, the horns of the cow, the nose of the koala, the arms and chest of the bear with the hands of the koala, and the back legs, I guess you could consider it the avex or the, the cow because they both have very similar uh, hind legs and then the tail I think I'll make similar to the cow. And then I'm also thinking uh, coloring wise a lot of these have browns in them except the well the avex and koala don't but I'm thinking about incorporating the browns and the spotting and maybe using some of the natural patterning that are from some of the animals and then going from there and then maybe using some of the gray of the koala. So I'm gonna experiment with that and see what final creature I can draft up. Okay, uh, let's get started. Alright guys, so there is my finished creature along with the four initial pictures that I got of the different animals that I combined to make this guy. And uh, I really like how he turned out. He's still kind of like in the rough stage. I didn't fully, I guess, do super high detail coloring because this was more of a concept. So one thing I want to point out is besides just using the anatomical features of the animals, I also use some of the, I guess, colors and patterns that are within them naturally. So I did use the brown for kind of the grizzly bear fur, but then I also brought over some of the spotting from the steer, like his underbelly had the white there on the underside, and then I had the spots. He has them more on his face, but I kind of wanted to put them throughout the design in other places, so I put it on the back. And then I really like the coloring of the uh, Adex head, like the different patches of browns and tans so I carried that up into the face here and then for the horns I know that the steer had more white horns and the abex had like a darker brown so I kind of just combined the two and did a light brown when you put the two together and uh yeah overall I like how it turned out so just to go over I did the uh head and 
horns and then uh, the back hind legs, like the bottom half, or I guess the whole back legs were more the adex. And then for the steer, I used the horns along with the ears. And then for the bear, I used the main body and the legs. And the koala, I used the hands for the koala. And then the tail was more of like a cow tail, but I kind of extended it out to be longer because I, I like the look of a longer tail instead of the shorter one. So yeah, um, overall, I like how it turned out. Uh, let me know if you guys try out this exercise and uh, shoot me a tweet. You can tag me in it. I'd love to see your creations by using this technique. And I hope you guys have fun and enjoyed the tutorial and if it was helpful in any way. And if there's any other things that you're thinking that you want help with or tutorials that you want me to make in the future, go ahead and leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear your guys' ideas and see what you want to learn. So thanks again, guys, for stopping by the channel, and I'll see you next Friday for another art video. Bye, guys.